Hello and welcome to Be Beyond Blast with me, Lindsay. Oh my god, I feel like something finally happened that's worth talking about and is interesting. It's only taken <laughs> however long it's been on. Um, I'm actually going to talk about the most recent episode, the VO, and then go backwards from there because I feel like that's got the most momentum to talk about. Ah, oh, it's interesting. It felt like a proper bit of drama at last. So they did this balanced veto, as usual, on the um, weekly replay. You only see about 10 seconds of it, but there was something to do with three tubes and you had to, be- um, not bury, balance um, on a balance beam. And uh, there was 30 balls that you had to get in the slots. And Shelby, for some reason, forgot to go along a balance beam on the way back. <laughs> um <laughs> Pride comes before a fall. Um, so she was boo-wooing because she lost. Jason won the veto, which I thought, oh, wicked, Jason won the veto. Because Jason is my favourite, Jason and Justin. Because I was like, oh, cool, Jason can do whatever he wants now. After the incredibly complicated rules and setup of the week, which we can pick back over later. But he said he wants to put Morgan up. Um, and then the Jamboree were all celebrating in the bathroom. Uh, Jason said, this is lit factory. I don't know what that means, but I think it's good. Then, um, uh, Shelby was up in the HOH crying. Alex said she didn't like the way that Danielle celebrated. Shelby said, don't cry or make me cry again. I was really enjoying all of their misery. It was good. Um, Shelby started punching the pillows, which took me back to Big Brother UK, Jay McRae, when he took that pillow out into the garden and smash the shit out of it all because harry ordered 500 bananas um that's one for the bbuk audience there um and then <laughs> this is where kind of the drama began uh <laughs> whitney whitney is such a double agent who'd have thought she had it in her <laughs> she goes to justin we should have a celebratory dinner Meanwhile, all the ball smashers are fucking sat up on the balcony. That's quite a good little spot there, isn't it, for eavesdropping? Let's eavesdrop on the people in the kitchen. Um, So all the ball smashers up there, they were like, what the fuck? I like the way that Morgan went down there and she was like, "Uh, what are we celebrating? That was so cool, the way she did that. Like, we've all been in that situation where we've overheard someone talking about us and we've just, like, walked in and gone, what was that? What were you just talking about? I respect Steph for doing that because not everyone would have the balls to go down there and do that. And then Whitney was like, oh, luckily I think on my feet quite quickly. You wouldn't think so with the way she talks. Um, But she said they were celebrating Justin no longer being on slop. (laughs) And they cut to all the ball smashers like rolling their eyes and being like, what the fuck are you talking about? I thought that was well played all round, really. Whitney kind of covered up quite well. Well, not that well, because they were onto her. But I like the way Morgan dealt with that as well. It was good. And Shelby said something like, finding out Whitney double-crossed us was like being punched in the stomach or something. I have no sympathy for Shelby whatsoever. Boring. Um, Then, oh yeah, then the ball smashers uh, decided to get Jason on side and say that they all wanted to get Whitney out. Um, Jason was cleaning his teeth while talking strategy, a personal fave from all international big brothers. Um, and then Jason was like pretending he was actually considering putting Whitney up. But then he said, you three are locked like a school of fish. And Alex said, oh, but you'd be the last person we touched. I thought, that's not that reassuring. Like, you'd be the fourth person in our alliance when in his own alliance, he's like probably first or second. So... I didn't think that was great bargaining on their side. But never mind, because Jason was about to put a bomb underneath his own game. So this is where Jason really lost the fucking plot. I don't know what he was thinking. Like, (sighs) right, at first what he was doing, like winding the ball smashes up, I thought, well, that's actually quite funny and I quite enjoyed it. Um, And in a game where there's no America's influence, I'd say, okay, that's a cool thing to do. It's funny, it's entertaining, you can have a bit of fun with it. But America sees, and America might not be too happy about that. Add on to that, it's a double eviction tonight, I think. It's Wednesday that I'm recording this. Uh, Jason, you basically, the way you behave, just put you head and shoulders above every other fucking person in your alliance um, to be public enemy number one. 
why would you do that? Part of Big Brother is to get people on your side, get people to vote for you at the end. Oh, actually, they don't vote at the end of this one, do they? But still, the social game. Where was Jason's social game? Okay, this is what Jason did. (laughs) He said... (laughs) He went to the ball smashers and said that he wanted to put up Justin because Justin was a big threat. They all believed it. That was the weirdest part, the fact that they believed it. But I think it was just a case of them wanting to believe it because they didn't really have anywhere else to go. So if someone tells you something's too good to be true, it is. But if you've got nothing else to believe in, then you might go for it. So they obviously did that. That didn't make sense, but you know what I mean. Um, But it's stupid because Jason and Justin are BFFs, so it's ridiculous. Um, And then Daniel and Jason were like, we're going to go make a fake alliance with the Bull Smashers. And Jason said, we'll give it the most cockamamie name ever. Now, the only other person I ever hear say the word cockamamie is Judge Judy. So just that whole bit I thought was hilarious. I was like, this is proper entertaining and proper fun. Um, So they went out to create the faux alliance. Uh, What name did they give it? I don't think they ever gave it one. They probably did. (laughs) Um, Alex could not have looked more pleased. She looked absolutely chuffed that this was happening. I thought the whole thing was hilarious. (laughs) ball smashers blind smashers more like (laughs) sorry that was awful I was trying to think of uh, like a mashup of like jamboree and ball smashers but I couldn't think of one um maybe for the title I'll I'll come back to it um so then Morgan was in the diary going yeah Justin's going up Justin has slid by this whole game I thought what the fuck have you done at least Justin's got like catchphrases and good shirts and cool hair and stuff and a funny moustache you got nothing or actually I do like Morgan <laughs> but still her saying that Justin is boring or is coasting is a bit rich you know you know mon chéri um so then we had <laughs> I was still enjoying the veto meeting even though it's like a bit cringing I was still enjoying it and then um It was just like seeing all their faces drop. I enjoyed that still. There was just one bit where Jason went too far. At first he said, oh, the unreliable loyalty you give to Scott. Which is true. They did treat Scott like a bit shit, but Scott was a bit shit. So, well. Um, But then he was like, oh, and you celebrated too much for something. They all celebrate when their side wins. So that's stupid. No one cares about that. Um, and then uh, when he put Morgan on the block, she went, oh, Jason came to us yesterday to talk about a final five. And she looked like all like a bit smug, like she'd like called him out. And then Jason like looked at everyone. He went, everybody knows. And that was the step too far because that was mean. That was like putting her on the block anyway was cruel. But then saying everybody knows, like she just tried to like out him. And the whole thing was just a trick on her. That would cross the line into meanness. And I expect more of you, Jason Roy. And I still love Jason. I don't. I'm. Sh- I've not been on Twitter, but fucking hell, I've been on Twitter looking at shit about fucking old Trumpton. But um, I don't care. I bet everyone's slating Jason. I still love Jason. He just. <sighs> I guess he got co h o h i s right. We gave him the fucking co a o h. The what? <laughs> the co h o h. So it's actually our fault. We made we gave him that itis we gave him the disease we created that monster um and now what we're gonna do say oh we don't want it now like frankenstein tough shit we got it um so then um oh then morgan was in the diary room and she said if alex goes i don't want to have to deal with these people farting on each other and popping zits (laughs) fair enough doesn't sound sounds like swimming out the zoo (laughs) not the big brother house bad enough when they're like giving each other foot massages and shit so oh god so that was the last bit i saw i'd be really interested to see the fallout from that i know it's gonna happen tonight but i'll be tucked up in bed by then but um oh jason what a dick i bet you one million english pounds um that jason goes home in the double eviction if he does he's only got himself to blame that was foolish gameplay i bet dave on sitting at home going jay jason what have you done um ridiculous why did he do that it was good though it was entertaining but it was mean mean spirited i heard a lot of people in the past couple of weeks going oh jason's a twat like jamboree is all cunts and stuff but i never saw that like danielle yeah she's a bit of a shallow 
idiot. But I never thought any of them were that mean. But what Jason did was quite mean. Actually, Christy, what's her name? Chrissy. <laughs> She's a bit mean as well. Danielle's mean. Justin's not mean, though. And Jason, I'll forgive him anything. But just when he went, everybody night, ooh, that was, ooh, that was mean. Anyway, I am going to talk about the rest of the week, even though it's all irrelevant now. So, what led us up to this point? This is like the bit on Big Brother after the double eviction where they do like the black and white bit. Um, and it says, oh, this is what happened, like in the break when they're all like whispering to each other and all going up to like Derek Levisseur and like begging for their lives and bowing and scraping and everything. Um, they we probably won't get that after the normal double eviction this time because I don't think they've got the budget to do the black and white, do you? Um, talking of uh, <laughs> comps on a budget, um, Shelby's HOH competition that she won was the classic morphing face task. This is another opportunity, surely, for the sisters to get called out. They both have the same face. They don't actually, but they have quite similar faces. You think that they could at least get it right. In fact, I think that gives them an advantage because they obviously know each other's faces very well because it's the same gene pool in that. What does Shelby do in like three minutes or something? Pretty good. I hate Shelby though. Um, so then, uh, oh God, Scott's interview. That's going back a bit. <sighs> Got to pay the bill, Scott. Um, oh yeah, Julie told him <laughs> about Alex and Morgan. He looked shocked, but it wasn't. It wasn't up there with the best shock faces, like when Caesar got evicted in BBUK or when Dustin got evicted in BBUS. You know, it was it was average. Um, <laughs> Julie Q and A. I don't even remember watching that. Julie was stern with Justin for calling her baby. <laughs> that sounds good. Um, <laughs> It's good when you read your own notes and you can't remember that thing happening. Oh, so then Julie announced there's going to be the double eviction. Um, Jason said, it's time to betray some hoes. Um, okay. Jason, I don't want to do Justin grimy. Yeah, he didn't do that. And Justin said to Shelby, I can't stand your guts. <laughs> I've put Shelby's HOH snacks look good. I don't remember those. Justin said to Shelby, we don't coagulate. I get along with everyone in this house except you. Uh, things not to say to the HOH 101. Um, it wasn't good seeing Justin under pressure. I'm glad he uh, dodged that bullet this week. Um, Justin and Whitney were bonding over broccoli. And then Jason got his care package. I was so happy when he got that care package. I was like, yeah, Jason. I was like, even on Twitter for a while saying yeah give Jason the care package now look what happened he's turned into a little tin pot tyrant he's like the trump of the big brother house um and Alex is like Hillary about to get evicted um Shelby was not very impressed when Jason got the HOH it was quite I quite liked uh seeing her have to suffer and um yeah, she's like pissing and moaning about not having the um, HOH room to herself and stuff. But um, I listened to a bit of Big Brother gossip earlier. I'm crediting them with this opinion because it's not my own. But um, she got to cancel out three people's votes last week. So what the fuck is she moaning about having to share her HOH? <sighs> Honestly. So, um, on the live feed, Big Brother was flirting with Chrissy and said, you're welcome when she said something. Mmm, sexy big brother. Like on Big Brother Australia, they used to have a sexy big brother. You're like, mmm, big brother, we'll see you now. <laughs> that was good. Uh, bring back Big Brother Australia already. Um, oh, mate. Oh, big brother. <laughs> um, so then Danielle put Shelby on blast for living with her aunt and uncle, being a waitress and having no money. Oh, yeah, there was a clip. I think that was on the live feed of Danielle saying she's going to, like, put Shelby on blast when she got out of the house or oh, I don't know, it's boring. Daniel Daniel talks too much. And then <laughs> yeah, that was good. Jason said Daniel has she's never been punched in the mouth before syndrome. <laughs> I knew exactly what he meant by that. <laughs> like <laughs> it's true. Until someone punches you in the face, you do talk a lot of shit. And then when that happens to you, it does make you watch yourself more. It's almost like Jason grew up in Northampton, like me. Um, <laughs> but I liked it when he said that. But then he had to clarify going, I'm not going to be the one to punch you in the face, big brother. <laughs> Threats of violence. Very naughty. Um, uh, the diary room session. 